Hi guys, welcome to the show. I'm Neil Pickup and we are here to look at some technical focus. Just now coming up from under the table on the far side is No Limits Devon Larratt. And I'm also joined by the reigning and defending WAL World Heavyweight Champion, Monster Michael Todd. Now these guys are known for a couple of things and we'll not talk about that anymore. They also arm wrestle. And one of the things that they do well in arm wrestling is probably the most controversial move that the sport has ever seen. It's known as the King's move, and people hate on this for so many reasons. One of those reasons is that they think there's no technique, no skill, no style, no strategy involved. We've invited these two guys along to sort of air that, to get it out in the open, and to educate people a little bit on the nuances of this controversial technique. Amazing technique. Probably the best bleeding All technique. All around what arm wrestling should be. The wounding technique. <laughs> so guys, let's get into it. Joking aside, this is a move which is little understood. A lot of people don't like it. They don't think that it is purist arm wrestling. They don't believe that there's any real technique there. In fact, the accusation has been levied that when you go to the Kings, it's because your ability to contest the match in a standard, upright position is no longer there. Your bicep has failed, your arm has failed. Yet you guys completely disagree with that and say that this is something you're actively seeking out. And I think that is something I'd agree with, that you're looking for this technique. What I wanted to do, Mike, is, if possible, mate, just show people exactly how you access this move. And then yourself and Devon can sort of talk through the finer points and where the pressure application is so that people get a clearer understanding of what you guys are doing as the match progresses. Want to start in the setup? Yeah, yeah. So basically what you're trying to do is because of the ease to get to the strap nowadays, um, the, the King's Move is a strap-based technique. You want to get the slip. So it's an outside move. It's an open top row. But uh, once you get the slip, now you're tied to your opponent. Me, personally, I like a very tight strap. I was gonna do that. I'll, I'll do it, you can talk. <laughs> yeah, um, so I, I like a very tight strap. And the reason being is uh, when I executed my King's move, it's gonna be a lot of pronation. So if I get a very tight strap, when my wrist pronates out, it forces yours, because we're tied so tightly, to bend back as well. The reason that's an advantage for me is most arm wrestlers Conventional style arm wrestlers train to be strong here, right? So the most access to their power is gonna be once their wrist is cupped yeah. or turned or whatever at some point. What my King's move does is it takes that person and it flattens them or it slightly bends them back. In the set. So no, when no, no, this is, this is, is after, no, this is this after is they go. After this the is go. after they okay. say ready go. So this is, you gotta, I get a real tight strap. Yeah. And all I'm looking for is, is, a, is a ready go and I need to pronate and see the back of my hand. Okay. So what that is for me, now Devin's uh, maybe a little bit different. For me, once I see the back of my hand, I know that he has been compromised, yep. right? So he does not have full access to his power. In order to do that, Michael, are you utilizing any side at the same time? So, it, so sometimes you get a lot of success in a strap. If off the start, it's not all here, it's that, <clears throat> and then even if you're forced back, you can fall into your top, you can fall into your supination. Are you using any side off the go or just a straight? Not for me in a defensive king's move. Okay. See, I have two different king's moves. I have a defensive king's move and I have an offensive king's move. My defensive king's move is a floating finger. Okay. No real clamping. It's all about escaping, right? Yep. So you take a, a hard side pressure puller and when they hit, like I said, they need that cup. When they hit right before they get to the pin line, I've hit, people are like, why didn't you hit? I'm like, I did, I did hit back. My backwards attack nullified and stopped their side pressure attack. Yep. So once they hit, I will get that wrist to crack right about there. And once they do, their power level cuts in half, right? Because they're used to being strong from here. Mm -hmm. Once I flatten them, they're not used to being strong in that position because they have not pulled from that position. Yep. I have full access to all my power with my wrist slightly cracked and pronated. So now I'm in a position I'm used to being in all the time. You're now in a position of frustration you're uncomfortable, mm -hmm. you're panicked. Yep. So now you're gonna do, a lot of guys will come back up and surge and surge, and the more they surge, the more access to my power I get because they lose ground every time. Um, so that's, a, that's my defensive style of King's Move. My offensive King's Move would have more side pressure. It would have a hand clamp right here. 
Um, I'm gonna hit with a lot of clamping pressure, pronate in, and then set my position, right? It's gonna boom. So on the attacking, you, you have a lot of flat finger pressure. Yes, ah, but, but that's, ah, that's okay. to eliminate the, the one route to beating a king's move previously, which this man demonstrated in 2011, was climbing. You climb, <clears> you climb, <throat> yep. you loosen the strap, you climb, you transition, you climb. I mean, you just, it's steady making those micro, we, you guys were yeah. talking about in the previous video. to be fair, Devon or a man of his kind of forearm length would have a lot better access too. In other words, if I'm in that same match with you, it's going to be a lot more difficult because I can't climb I that have, far. Yeah, I would not have to use uh, the offensive attack on someone with your lever. With a shorter arm. Um, mm. Because I'm still going to have safety and protection in my riser in my hand. Okay. Um, with, with someone like Devin, he's the one who exposed my initial king's move because yeah. I didn't realize there were multiple king's move. I just thought this is what I did. It was an open top row and I, I came out here and got, you okay. know, I just catch and adjust, adjust. Well, then I got out adjusted. Mm -hmm. I technically got out arm wrestled. He found the hole and exposed it. Okay. So then I created, came up with my offensive king's move, which is clamping pressure. So you'll see- And it's a flat, just to be, just this isn't a grip with the no, fingers. It's, it's not a, a squeezing, flat. it's not a squeezing, it's a clamping pressure. Yep. So as- Man, You're talking about like so, you've gone far. Way too far. I feel like you've gone far. Yeah. I feel like if you'll we wanna- Take over I, I just, I feel like if we wanna like, exp like, cause I mean, we're talking about arm wrestling. Like, and, and we've gone deep down. I think that what people need to understand about the King's move is, is uh, where is the root, right? When you understand, like, what is the part that, like, is your no-fail location, then you can kind of understand where you're getting to. And I feel like for the King's move, the real lock is pronation. Pronation's pronation key. is the anchor of this whole thing. Yeah. So, so when you're setting up the move, it's like setting up any arm wrestling. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't care whether you're a hooker, a presser, a king's mover, a flopper, you're setting up to get all your advantages as possible. So you setup. still are looking for I'm the same heights in the same places? <sighs> Probably everything. a little bit more to do with the hand than the shoulder. Okay. Because I will be giving it away, mm -hmm. okay? So, and, and the hand is very vital, I believe. And if there's one thing that's the most vital, I would say it's the thumb. Because I, I feel like the thumb lock is what's the turn. Okay. And, that, and the, the pronation at the end of the whole expression mm -hmm. is through the thumb. Now, so you always cap in your king's move. I'm capping. Yes, or see, you, I, I'm uncapped. Okay, so, that, that's, guys, a, so just, that's an interesting change already. Yeah. Um, but I feel like no matter what, like it's, it, there's a turn there. Oh, are you creating any distance between the thumbs? In other words, are you backing your thumb off a little? Now, I personally am looking for depth. You're looking for depth, okay. I'm looking for depth. So that, now now for me, when I'm thinking about Kings moving, it's actually, now when I'm thinking about strap arm wrestling, it's very rare for me to ever think that it's not to my advantage to row for everything I'm worth as the primary drive. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like as soon as that strap is on, the bicep just becomes devalued. I agree. Okay, and, and the thing that the strap gives you is the ability to clamp yeah. as opposed to cup. Yeah. And <clears throat> so in the king's move, your anchor is your row, mm -hmm. okay? And I don't care where you are on the table, I'm rowing. Got drag pressure, I'm, yeah. I'm rowing. Controlling the center of the table, hand peg to hand peg. And, yeah. I, oh, and, okay. I, and I'm pronating for everything I'm worth. And I'll give you every bit. I'll, I'll, I'll start arm wrestling like this. Mm -hmm. I'll give you this. And just let it go I'll and then this. hit that pronation. No, no, I'll be hitting the pronation the from whole- the, yeah, From, from the, the get-go. And, 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 Kind of the... And it really is pronounced, guys. If you feel, when you're feeling that, it is really a very hard, almost like he's trying to turn the bottom of his hand over the top of my wrist. It's a very, very hard pronation. And it's something that you don't one. have access to until you have a strap on. Mm. If we don't have a strap, you won't feel this pressure. But because we're tied up, and like you said, the tighter the strap is, the more you will feel it. And you feel like your wrist is protected in there as well. You, it's well, giving you... what happens is your wrist will bend back. Yeah. And because I'm a comfortable king's mover, I'm comfortable with my wrist being back. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm used to this and mm -hmm. I've practiced it. But you might not be comfortable with your wrist bent back. Absolutely, I wouldn't. Right. Because okay. the, tra the traditional arm wrestler trains from this to position protect cup. the wrist. This is where yeah, they access their course. power. Yeah. Right. We are okay with, with in this, because we're still extremely powerful yeah. from that spot. Mm -hmm. And it takes away the comfort that you you train for. Sure. So the key, and I'm gonna just let you get back to what yeah, you're yeah. saying. The my opinion is, 
when you're training or whatever, and you know that you may end up in this style of arm wrestling, you have to train for worst case scenario. Of Maybe course, you don't yeah. get the best setup. Maybe you don't get the best start. So many arm wrestlers out there, they want to have everything. They want it all. And that's how they train. And that's when, yeah. they, that's when they feel unbeatable. Great, so, and that's awesome. Yeah. But when I take that from you, you're going to be in a world of so desperation. So for you, Mike, you've made this, con th this constant point about the Kings moving about your style, that it is something that you can utilize to the fullest extent, whether you're pulling in any rule system, strict rules, looser rules, whatever you want. Is that why? Because you feel like on the setup, you don't actually need that much. You can pretty much go from most places. For me, personally, yes. Uh, Devin has, like I said, okay. Devin's taken it and he's, he's analyzed, you know, he's like, okay, cool. And what I was just noticing there, I don't know if this is what you feel, because he will commit to this and then he'll give it away. <clears throat> I noticed him maybe getting another inch or two worth of ability to catch. Where I will be out here, I have a shorter spot to yeah, catch from. So I, if Devin's lever, here, yes. Devin gets to have like a, a, even if it's an eighth of a second more time to engage and mm. stop. Because it's a long arc, I, Michael. Right? I'm gonna still teach you some more. Don't worry. Right, it's a long arc. <laughs> hey, I'm good. It, this is horrible for you. I know it is. Oh my god! But I can't like believe that. you're saying this stuff. The, the, the thing is, though, the, if you look at the origins of the King's move, right? If you look at the origins of the King's move both the guys uh, that, that utilize this first, and particularly Zakowitz. George Zakowitz had a short arm, yes. super short. You know, so he was almost the polar opposite of yourself. I, I always hear people say that if you have this build, you must pull this style, and I completely disagree with that. Mm. I think that any build can pull in any style, so as long as you understand the theories. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about one more angle that, in my opinion, is super vital in the King's move, and it comes through pronational strength and the way that you open. So a lot of times when people arm wrestle, they're, they're told to bring their elbows inside their body. Sure. And for a lot of inside styles and it's compressive stuff. strength, this is, this is an advantage. Yep. But in a King's move, to have your elbow inside your body is not good to create the pronational lock that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking for is that old Taras style, <laughs> right, right by okay. your side, the right. marching soldier. Yes. So if your <laughs> if your elbow yeah. is outside of your body, and you're being opened, yes, so that your arm is not turned over. Wow. Yeah. You really feel that. Yes. Wow. That's okay. really effective. So if if I'm if I hit here and right away because of my body dropping, yeah, I hear. Yeah. That's so you have really to effective. cut down and open, open my arm in a straight manner. Yes. And, Your and, ability to run so much more effective there. I'm not getting yeah, any access. Right, and so that's why a lot of times when people, people are always moving their elbows inside and out in an arm wrestling match. Yeah. Inside typically means inside, mm -hmm. outside typically means outside styles of arm wrestling. Yeah. King's move is the furthest on the outside. Mm. Flop wrist is the furthest on the inside. Yeah. Right, so when you're setting up King's move, be ready to have that outside, elbow outside the body, and drag, and set that angle so that you have to open straight, mm. not turned over. That's really good. That's really fascinating, yeah. That's why it's such a difficult... That's, that's actually difficult really effective. To pin conventionally. Yeah. That's why he's saying the, the, the furthest outside is a King's move, the furthest inside the flop. <laughs> that's why I flop technically can be effective against a king's move. Yeah, ultra But it's who, it's who gets to spot first, right? right? The, the, the really cool thing about arm wrestling is it's believed by most people that the post is the king of hand control. Mm. You know, whoever has the high hand dictates the entire flow of the arm wrestling match. But with a strap, things get changed because you have access to so many different things, like grip, like pronation. So really, I think if you had asked the question, what is the center of arm wrestling uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago when the ease to getting the strap was less, mm -hmm. I think people would all say high hook. Yeah. High hook is the center of arm wrestling. But in leagues where you have access to a strap, it is hard to argue that the high hook you know, has the immediate access to power that all these drag-based styles have. Mm. And when it comes to musculature in the hand, your ability to squeeze is probably the most powerful thing that your hand has in it. And just to pick up on the point that we were talking about before we started this piece, I mean, I was talking to the lads about this, and aesthetically, I'm not a fan of the King's move. I have no problem with the King's move as a style of arm wrestling. It's ultra-effective. Um, 
we were discussing whether or not this looked good. And I said, look, it's not as visceral as, as a lot of the other techniques. It doesn't have that. It's almost like in a, in, a, in, a, in a boxing match or in the UFC. If you're standing toe to toe swinging, it looks really good. It looks aesthetically pleasing. It's what people want to see. I'd liken this to the jab because you, you, you get a guy with a great jab. It may not look effective, but it does so much damage. It, it prevents your opponent from ever getting into their lane in the way that Michael was talking about there. They just, you don't have the access to your strength in any area and it's almost a choker. The more you try to access that, you feel like you're being strung in, your wrist is broken back and you never get back in there. It's an, the ultimate wounding, bleeding weapon. I feel like you think it's not pretty because guys Ugly like moves. Michael, George Zakowitz and myself do it. When, when Mike Yellow, Sarah Backman start doing it, then everybody's gonna love it. Like I'm not gonna lie, Sarah ever. Backman would probably do any move. Um, <laughs> That's the most beautiful arm wrestling move I've ever It's seen. definitely more aesthetically pleasing than anything you buggers do, I'm not gonna lie. But, <laughs> joking aside guys, um, this is a fascinating technique. It, it is something that I think there's, I don't think it's ever gonna be uh, top of anybody's uh, technical uh, list. I don't think people are going to warm to it and it's going to take a lot of education But just from what we've gone through there in that short period of time I think this is a very advanced move and I think it's a move that does have a lot of nuances a lot of um, very specific elements, but well, also once the match stops uh, There are so many adjustments that are being made mm -hmm. um, People think oh you're sitting there holding no you're 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 countering you're you're rising you're you're bumping side pressure to see where you have access, right? But the pronation, the constant, just uh, that little adjustment. And in that it just position, you're going. looking for the finish. So you said, this isn't my finish, it's my precursor, it's the wounding technique, yeah. and then I'm going to finish with. I'm going to transition press, press most of the time. Mm. Um, sometimes, you know, the access is there, the, the opponent bleeds out, and it's just a, it's a straight, just bicep curl to pin, right? But I never understood the whole prejudice behind the move. Really, I, I just don't get it. I mean, you, you can stop people in a hook, you can stop people in a press, you can stop people in any move. Mm. Any move can be a bleeding move. Uh, I, I, I like anything that wins, really. That's the way I see it. King's move wins a lot of big matches. Yes, it does. Ladies and gentlemen, that is beyond contestation. Whether you're a lover or a hater, one thing you cannot argue with is the effectiveness of this technique. We hope you learned something, hope you picked something up. Fellas, thank you very much for your time.